everyone. Thanks for checking into the Pit Stop. This is our recap for Amazing Race Season 36, Episode 1, You Can't Drive While You're Crying. I'm sad to say that my husband won't be joining me to recap this season due to some scheduling conflicts. So I have someone stepping in. My bestie from the Challenge USA, who equally represented the Amazing Race with me from Season 33, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> Not you calling me an upgrade from Will. <laughs> I mean, in the hey, doghouse later. Hey, hey. No, I'm so excited to recap this season with you because, like, I feel like you and I watch so much reality TV and we always text each other our opinions. So I'm like, now let's bring this to like a podcast form and let's start with none other than the amazing race of all shows. Duh. Duh. Before we talk about this uh, season, this episode, this premiere, Kayla, why don't you give a little bit of an update to the amazing race fans who are tuning in? What have you been up to since your season of the race, amazing race? And of course, our time on the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> After my time on the challenge ended quite, uh, <laughs> quite brutally. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been de-thawing ever since then. No, no. not the de-thawing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I'm basically playing like housewife. Do you see? Don't no one judge my like I was trying to touch up the paint on my wall in this room and clearly <laughs> missed the color. So <laughs> yeah, Colton and I bought a house in Gulf Breeze, Florida. I'm just living, you know the little stepmom life <laughs> <laughs> and like vicariously living through every reality tv show that i possibly can and texting you about it 24 7 i know that's truly basically. especially like the amazing race i feel like every time a new season comes around we're always like oh i miss it like it's just one of those experiences that can never compare to yeah. anything else we ever do in our life and i know I mean, I can speak for the both of us. I feel like we're itching for that kind of adventure and excitement again. Yeah. It's like, I, I have to like remind myself like, oh, I did get to do it. You know, I'm like incredibly fortunate. Right. But it's, it's just like every season, it doesn't change. I'm like, oh, I want to do it so bad. I want to go back, you know? Well, let's talk about this season. We're going to do things a little differently just because we didn't do a cast assessment just because there weren't a lot of videos that were published before this season, which is wild to me. Right. If I'm like trying to do all my sleuthing. I'm like, James, like do you have like some, <laughs> some stuff that I don't know. Like I had to wait like everyone to try to figure out like who are these teams. Um, but I want to talk about just kind of like our overall like view of this episode and then we'll dive into each team individually and then what their journey on this leg was like. As we know, the teams are starting off at, at an international starting line, which this is the second time in Amazing Race history that this has happened. The first time being season 34 started, I believe, in Germany. And then here we are starting in Puerto Vallarta for season 36. How do you feel about it? I like, I'm, I don't know. Like, I, it, it's so <laughs> weird now that I've done it because I feel like my thoughts are so skewed sometimes. Like, for me personally, like, there was just something exciting starting, like, at home and then all having to like leave the country like on your own or like I mean I guess kind of together so yeah. it's like just the fact that you're like already transplanted and starting in another country I mean it kind of just like gets the ball rolling I don't know that I love it if I'm being completely honest fair and I'm just thinking about it too yeah we had very different starting line experiences like I had a very traditional starting line in terms of like we were all lined up at the Hollywood Bowl together you had like Phil popping up telling you like, go. Yeah. And he goes, this is where you're going. And then we all had to go. And I guess, okay, let me elaborate a little bit more on this. So just, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I really botched that, but like I needed a minute to process like how I really felt before I like, uh, <laughs> my fair, okay, fair. this is how I feel about it in this particular instance with them all starting already in another country for some people, which it kind of see, I'm, I'm curious to know if you picked up on it. A lot of people seem to speak another language. Like mm. I'm literally seeing them interact with guests on the street in that native language. That's a huge advantage huge. for certain teams yep. compared to other teams that don't have that. So to start in a country where some people have a leg up and some people don't, I'm like eh, a little indifferent about, but also like that's the amazing race. That's what happens, you know, like. My first leg was in London. Granted, everyone speaks English, but like I had laid over there dozens of times. So I knew London like the back of my hand. I didn't need a map. 
So, you know, you could kind of say the same thing about us. However, you know, we did start in an apartment in Nashville for us and had to get to the airport, meet other teams and still get on the airplane to go to London together. So it was kind of like even, I guess, in in my eyes, whereas this I, part of it kind of felt like, oh, well, that's a little unfair. Like so many of these people speak Spanish. But I mean, again, that's the race. That's how it goes. And I think with our season two, like we had to travel to Houston with a layover and then to Trinidad, Tobago, spend the night in an airport. Like our first leg was so physically demanding. And I feel like starting right away in the country that the first leg is in, you're yeah. not having to deal with just like how physically taxing the race already is 100%. from leaving from the US and having to travel there to begin with. But I think Puerto Vallarta, I mean, it's the first time the race has been there. It's considered the friendliest city in the world, the number one culinary destination in Mexico. And of course, they have some high rated beaches, some of the best in the world. But also Phil announces that there are no non elimination legs on this season of the race. And I'm indifferent on how I feel about that. Just because after last season 35, I felt like it was very predictable in terms of like, if a team was really far behind, as a viewer, because we know that there's no non-eliminations, you kind of already know that they're going to get eliminated. So I hope there's a little bit of a editing change where it feels like it's not so predictable. But I do like the non-eliminations because it does keep teams on their feet. 100%. And it, you know, it, it doesn't leave a lot of room for error, which I don't think there's a lot of room for error in the Amazing Race in general. Again, it's like you're not out until you're last. But, no. you know, when you know that there's a non-elimination, a non-elimin elimination <laughs> um you know depending on how far in you get like that's just like an added cushion in your mind where you're like oh like maybe it's this which i mean could go either way for teams some people could be banking on that and then it kind of screw them but yeah i mean i i do hope it's not predictable and i think yeah. that's fair now that we're viewers watching from the comfort of our own home <laughs> um, and then phil also shared that this is the first time that we'll be seeing new two new countries on this season of Amazing Race. Yep. So I can't wait to see what those two new countries are. So on this leg of the race, the detour was pick them up or pin them down. For pick them up, the teams had to make their way to a storage unit up on a hill and then transport some rocking horses down narrow cobblestone streets to the Malacone in order to receive their next clue. In pin them down, teams had to watch a 40-second Lucha Libre match and then rely on their memory to match five pairs on who was fighting who in order to receive their next clue. If you and Raquel were on this season of the race, which part of the detour do you think you would have chosen? I 100% would have chosen the Nacho Libre one. Like I'm all about memory. I'm thinking 40 seconds. That's not that's not a lot of time. So I can't imagine how much you'd have to memorize. Like that would be my thought process going into it. Raquel would be the total opposite. Like this would be like me and Raquel having a full conversation kind of being like who's going to win this one out because she was always like, if we can choose physical, let's choose physical. But I 100%, like I just, I think my memory so strong and 40 seconds. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, how much could there be to memorize in 40 seconds? Like I, I just, it, I would do that. That way I was still well rested for like the rest of the leg. What about you guys? I think I yeah, know. But. I would like to think that Will and I would have chosen the pin them down just because, yeah, I think, I mean, hello, if you watched our season of the Challenge USA, you and I crushed our elimination purely based, crushed, <laughs> crushed our elimination purely based on the memorization part of it. Granted, we were also really great on the cycling, <laughs> you know, bikes, but I do think with memorizing, we crushed it. So I think that Will and I would naturally go to pin him down. But I did like what Danny said in terms of his logic as to why him and his mom chose pick him up is that he said pick him up is a little bit more straightforward as you just know you have to take and transport a rocking horse from one point of the city to the next. Where with the pin him down, you only have 40 seconds to capture as much as you can with how fast paced the match is and then have to match them. And you saw all the teams did struggle with matching. It took them a couple of attempts, yeah. but I do think Will and I would have done pin them down purely based on memory is our better strong suit than 
physicality. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just thinking like playing devil's advocate. Yes, you're just taking it to one place to the next. But like, I have so many questions, right? Like, are you given directions to right. exactly where you have to put them? Are you right. having to figure that out on your own? And as we saw in this episode, a lot of people had some issues with directions. So a if like the task itself involved direction, that's how I would like win that argument with Raquel. I'd be like, Raquel, like we don't speak Spanish. If we have to find directions and we carry this thing the wrong direction, like we're double screwed, you know? So that's a very valid point. The directions are another component that I feel like, yeah, pin them down. You don't have to really worry about directions. You just have to worry about that one stationary spot and watch this match happen in front of you. Yeah. And like five, when it goes on every five minutes, like that's not terrible, you know? So I saw one of the teams that did it three times. You know, that's yeah. 15 minutes, give or take, which is not, it's not, an, it's not too much. Well, in terms of the roadblock for this leg of the race, the clue was who is feeling loopy? And the participant for this roadblock had to complete a charo challenge by jumping through a series of seven spinning lassos without knocking off their wide brimmed hat. Kayla, out of you and Raquel, who do you think would have done this roadblock? I think Raquel, I at least hope Raquel would do it because <laughs> I was getting a kick out of watching them like jump through them. I think a lot of the guys, it was crazy to see them almost like fold into like a V and like jump through it. Like I could just picture Raquel like lopsidedly <laughs> trying to hop through it and I would have just had a field day like dying <laughs> laughing at her. But again, yeah, yeah like it was like if we're, if it was physical if we could like guess that it, it would be Raquel, but honestly, like it's loopy. I think I probably would have gathered that it was like a lasso thing, Yeah. but yeah. my mind probably would have gone to like, we had to tie a lasso. I think I overthink all the clues. And Same. so I would have been like, okay, even though it's a rodeo, I bet you they're trying to throw us off. It's not actually going to be physical. It's going to be pay attention to detail. And it's like, yep. that would have been me, not Raquel. <laughs> But I, knowing what it is now that you had to jump through, Raquel, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think Will or, Will or I could have easily been capable with this. But my one concern, if Will would have been the one to do this roadblock, is that he's too tall. I mean, Kayla, you know he is tall. Yes, and I, just I think was thinking the same thing. He would have a hard time jumping through those lassos based on his height alone. And I would be afraid that his hat would continue to be knocked off. I would hope that I would have made the choice to do this roadblock. But given our mentality with the first leg of our season, I didn't want the pressure of that first roadblock, which is why Will ended up doing it. If I am the reason we go home on the first, I don't want that. I would never be able to I live can't with handle that pressure. No. So I do think Will would have ended up doing it. But you know, Will's adaptable. He's quick on his feet. I do think he would have been great at it and found a way to maneuver through that lasso because he's a dancer. But I do think the height yeah. would have been very challenging. Like the the football, the orange team. Yes. Like, I'm going to need you to make this lasso a little bigger. <laughs> like, That's a good yeah. point. I think Rod was a perfect example as to how it would have been for Will. I was shocked when I first met Will in person. I did not real you too. I did not realize how tall both of you were. But for Will to be even that much taller than you, that would have been difficult for him. For very sure. difficult. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about these teams since we didn't do a cast assessment. I mean, since we're already talking about Rod and Letitia. They were the first place team for this portion of the leg. There was a video that was released where it feels like the first leg of this season is a mega leg. And I'm watching this and I'm like, what part of this is a mega leg? Because when we did a mega leg, there was no pit stop in between right. double the detours and double the roadblocks. I would consider this a keep on racing leg. Yeah, like if it was a mega leg, then I don't want to get their names wrong. Maya and Rohan you wouldn't know, have they, been eliminated. They wouldn't have. No, so there wouldn't I, have honestly, been a pit when stop. he told yeah. you know the first place team, oh, and you're still racing. I honestly thought I go, oh, well, so it's not an, it's not an elimination. Like they're all gonna get to go through. I'm with you. It's a keep on racing leg in amazing race terms, not a mega leg. Um, but Rod and Letitia got first on this leg, so let's kind of talk about their overall journey on leg number one. I feel like they clearly have a strong relationship. We saw from the get-go, Letitia's like, you know, 
he's the best teammate I've ever had in my life. That's why I've married him. And then Rod being a former NFL player, like he thinks that's going to translate really well to the amazing race because he can really kind of rise to the occasion, perform well under pressure. And then Letitia also talked about how she grew up from hung humble beginnings and that's why she's been a fighter her whole life so i i have a strong feeling that neither of these two are ever going to quit not only on the tasks but on each other what were your thoughts on rod and Letitia this leg i immediately thought to myself well this is a this is probably a better i'm assuming there's gonna be a better outcome than the football player on your team <laughs> <laughs> no shade to gary and d'angelo no no shade no shade whatsoever but i was gonna say like i just can't see him or her giving up like no. you said and just like watching them throughout the whole leg they were having fun with it too yeah. which, is, which is honestly having done it very hard to do especially on the first leg because you have that boiling pressure of like from the day that you got the call that you know you're being cast and you're going through the process like that anxiety starts then and the first leg is the hardest right so to be able to take yourself out of like oh my gosh this is make or break I don't want to be the first team eliminated and to have fun during that leg I just think is is huge as far as like how they're going to be as a team I think they are going to be a strong team as they've proven to be since they got first literally in the first leg Watching what a hot recap, couple what a hot team. they are a very hot couple <laughs> and they are strong as hell and they mentioned that they've been together for nine years and I feel like after nine years of being together or married they said married for nine years I think you know each other really well. You know what pushes each other's buttons, what doesn't. You know each other's strengths. You know each other's weaknesses. I just feel like they're going to be a very formidable force this entire season. And I think them and how they perform this first leg is just going to set the tone. If they keep racing like they did that first leg, they will be very, very good. <laughs> The next team who I think had a very clean leg and I think are not to be underestimated this season is Ricky and Cesar, 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 I, Cesar, I, Cesar, 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 Cesar. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I got it right, but I probably am already butchering it. I'm excited to watch their journey on this season of The Amazing Race. And it's no secret that they're best dressed. I am obsessed with their shirts and I want to know if they're going to wear these shirts the entire season. <laughs> and I hope that they do. <laughs> they are going to be so strong, I think, because one... Um, I can't remember who. If I think it's is it Ricky who's the super fan or is it Cesar? It's Cesar. 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 Yeah. Cesar. Okay. Well, he's a super fan, and I loved how Ricky was kind of like, yes, he's a super fan, but like this is something that we're getting to do together. So this is now our journey. I just love how they're going into it because like it's just such an incredible thing to share. But they had a really smooth leg too. They were first to arrive at the box to get the clue. They were first to arrive at the detour. Obviously they finished overall in second, but another team with a very smooth leg. Um, and one of them speaks Spanish, don't they? Or do both of them? And they were just there. Yeah, I thought that was a really cute point in terms of like their relationship of the fact that they were like, you know what, Puerto Vallarta is a very important city and place for our relationship because after nine months of dating, this is where we became official boyfriends. So I love just like that little backstory point. I, I feel like they were both kind of speaking Spanish at one point or another in this episode. Yeah. Knowing the language is huge. a huge advantage. I do think that that's going to help them quite a bit. So I don't think that they're a team to be underestimated. I think they're such a cute couple. And I think they're definitely going to learn a lot about each other because the Amazing Race definitely oh, yeah. kind of exposes a lot about your partner. But I, I think that they had a really clean leg overall. I hope they wear these shirts the entire season. I'm going to be a little disappointed if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> also, another point to bring up is that they made the right choice as to what side of the detour they wanted to do because they said after having visited Puerto Vallarta before, they remembered seeing the rocking horses and how big they were. Yeah. And because of that, they were like, no, 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 we're going to do pin them down because of that knowledge already. So 
pulling from life experience, I think is a very important aspect of the amazing race. And they're already showing that they're going to be a very strong, well thought out team. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing how they race. Me too. In third place was Derek and Shalisa. I think that they are going to be a very strong team. There was one moment in particular that I laughed at. And I think if you had done the amazing race before you would be able to pick up on this but it's when they were running down the street and like the sudoku book falls out of her fanny pack and, and the, the crossword yes and i'm like oh those look awfully i literally familiar. made a note about it i literally made a note about it i go oh there's the crossword i knew you would i was like i was like if anyone's gonna get it it's kayla i just They give you these like Sudoku books, these crossword books, like before you start the race, like while you're in your hotel room waiting to begin filming. When they fell out and he was like, throw them out, dispose of them. I thought that was so funny and just so real. I'm like, yeah, you don't really need them. It's a nice like thing to have to pass time and like the airport or on airplanes, but you don't need them for the race. You definitely don't (laughs) need them. But had Raquel told me to throw out my crossword, that would have been the one fight we had that would have been aired because I held on to those crossword's like pure gold. (laughs) Like it was like my sanity (laughs) and moments where I needed to escape the race. I loved the crossword. But as much oh as I God. laughed, I was like, oh, girl, you can't be losing passports or like anything. So hopefully Nothing. that's not some like foreshadowing of kind of how they keep their stuff together. <laughs> They've been married for so long. I think they said like 34 years. They're each other's best friends. Derek is a recently retired chief of police. I just think that they're going to work really well together. And they have like this level of discipline that I think you need on the race. Right. And I have a bone to pick with Amazing Race because they did them dirty by giving them the name of grandparents. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm going to call them the grandparents. I'm like, they were firefighters, like, or police officers. So anyways, <sighs> but no, like with, with age comes wisdom and life experience. And that has proven to be a key to success in Amazing Race, at least for sure, for sure on my season, Kim and Penn were on it on <laughs> I mean they're not grandparents they I literally have them in my phone as hot mom and dad still but I'm like if, I, if they were on my season they, they would be hot grandma and hot grandpa because they are such a physically fit like couple <laughs> But I will say, like, they did have a little bit of dynamic in the car where they kind of, like, not bickered. They, like, still giggled at each other. But, like, there was definitely, like, some dynamic in the car where they're going over directions. And then the dropping of, yes, it was just a crossword, but had it been a passport, that could have been a big deal. <sighs> that would have been strong. But, but they did have some minor moments where I was like, eh, that could we'll be a big see, deal. We'll see if those minor moments continue. We shall see. <laughs> I've made a note. <laughs> And fourth place was Juan and Shane, and they actually had a pretty bumpy start to this leg of the race, starting off in the back of the pack. I think they got to that first clue box in 12. There's Will in the background. Say, hey, Will. (laughs) The man himself. Are you jealous, Will? (laughs) So Juan and Shane have known each other for quite some time, based on what we did get to know about them. They said that they met in pilot training, which is a very strenuous experience. On any good day or bad day, they were always able to just kind of rely on each other through that training. So I do think that there's a level of their relationship that definitely sets them apart from the other teams. I think there's that trust, right? Because they've gone through some, for lack of a better word, they've gone through some shit together. So I do think that they are going to be a very strong team, despite having a bumpy start. But they bounced back pretty quickly because they got fourth overall, which is not too bad. That was like the big thing I made a note of because they surpassed, you know, what was it? Three teams? Yeah. In that fi- yeah. I mean, that's huge. Again, it's like the teams that can that can go from the back of the pack to the front of the pack. That is that's a huge change in just how your day goes. I mean, it just kind of shows how versatile that they that they can be. I also saw Juan was wearing a UCF hat. And I literally thought I'm like, that kid looks kind of familiar. So I went to UCF Juan. Do we know each other? Are we Facebook <laughs> friends? But no, they, they kind of remind me a lot of Raquel and I because 
Raquel and I met in flight attendants training. It was almost like trauma bonding, right? We were kind of put through the ringer in training and we just clung to each other. We got to know each other in a very like strenuous environment, but then obviously like had such a beautiful career. And, you know, I, I feel the same for both of them. But yeah, the, the biggest thing I noticed about them was them starting in the back and finishing as far in the front as they did. That's impressive. And Fifth place was Michelle and Sean, Team Double Dutch. They seem like they have this infectious enthusiasm. And I just can see why they are successful as instructors. Because if I took their class, I would want them to teach me every single day. So Michelle and Sean, I think, are going to be really fun to watch. And she's a world champion. I know. I was like, wow, like who even knew that was a thing? Like, I'm pretty sure I remember trying to double dutch one time and it ended horribly wrong. Like pretty sure face hit pavement. So <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they're definitely like energy is infectious. I just, I love their attitude and the fact that they work together and have a family together and they're married, you know, it, that kind of tests you in all aspects of relationship like I only live with my boyfriend if I had to work with him I don't know that I would survive so (laughs) in those high pressure moments of the race like maybe that's something that they deal with on a day-to-day basis like with their business or like it's like an environment that they've been in and you know kind of they they communicate really well I don't know I felt like I didn't really see too much of this team if I'm being honest, like I have more notes about other teams. I, I definitely think their energy is infectious. And I mean, they they finished in the middle of the pack. Hey, that's steady. <laughs> that, yeah, not a bad, bad spot to be in, especially in the first leg, especially on the keep on racing leg, no less. I feel like they'll they'll continue to maintain kind of that middle of the pack placement. It's just a matter of like, can you get out of that placement as the race continues to progress? I love them already just because of their energy. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do too. Like I really hope we get to like see a little bit more of them next episode. Another team that got six was Yvonne and Melissa, dating couple from San Diego. I already like them. I want to see more of them, but I do love that, you know, that they've been dating for three years. They mentioned that they are both fiercely independent. I mean, they don't even live together. They met in the girls who like girls who like to hike group um, love that obsessed with that <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like i i like girls not in that way but i'm like i want to be part of this group i love the hike <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I just I feel like they're going to be a very strong all female team. And honestly, I mean, you know, this, I feel like we are due for an all female team to win the amazing race. The last was Amy and Maya season 25. And I just feel like if anyone from the season that's an all female team is capable based on what we saw with this episode could be that team. Yes, based on what we saw in this episode in their placement, plus one of them, if not both, speak Spanish. That's going to come in huge, again, with like this being a predominantly, yeah, like all South America race. I about fell at my chair when they were like, you know, fiercely independent, like they're... I I love people who do things in like an unconventional way. I like people that don't conform to the norm and, uh, you know, them talking about like starting a family, even though they live separately. I'm just like, you go girls, like do, do what's best for you guys. You know, like I just, I I loved that. And I related to that a lot. And then obviously like an all female team that speaks Spanish in this particular season, I like have my hopes up high for an all female (laughs) win. (laughs) But yes, I want to see more of them. Seventh place this leg was Danny and Angie. And I've been singing their praises on every recap that I've done so far for this season. I've known Danny for years, like way before he was on the race, obviously, way before Will and I were on the amazing race. He is just one of the nicest human beings you could ever meet. And I feel like that's a true testament to how his mom raised him. And you can tell just from this episode alone, his mom is a freaking star. I just feel like they're going to be very underestimated. And I feel like in a competition in a race like this, that's a really good spot to be in. You want people to underestimate you. So I'm excited about Danny and Angie. Yeah, I immediately am getting Kim Holderness vibes from her. Like we I I think every season probably has some form of like a race mom. Like it truly is that emotional support for you. (laughs) Um, But I just 
just to see him getting teared up like he's like you know she's my hero and and I said wasn't it him that said like I wanted to do this ever since I was like seven years old and I wanted to do it with my mom did I make that up or was that him that said that no he did he he said he's like grown up watching the show and I can I can confirm that that is 100 percent true true he is a diehard fan he's applied for all these sh- reality competition shows just like me, I can relate to him on that point. And he has like this brain that's like perfect for puzzles and outsmarting things. Like he is just so smart and so crafty. And I just like, they're going to be so scrappy and being able to like pull their way to the top. Like you said, like scrappy in like an underestimated kind of way. And those are like the sneakiest team. But I just, I, I have all the feels for them just because I started watching Amazing Race with my mom. And yes, I did it with Raquel, but I would have Same. loved to do it with my mom just because yeah, like, I grew up watching it with her. And so, yeah, to see that like full circle moment, like how many people can have that opportunity to do with like a parent and like sometimes on like the parent, you know, child dynamics. I like almost right away can tell like, oh, I don't know if that's going to play out well. <laughs> like I know me personally, I, I don't know how I would race with one of my parents, even though it would be very special. I just don't think yeah. our communication <laughs> would prove to be <laughs> as positive as, as I think Danny and his mom are going to be like, they, they just are absolutely adorable i did not know that you knew him for so long yeah. but yeah. yeah he he had me sold on like one of my top picks when he was like i've watched ever since i was seven with my mom and to get to do this with my hero is just a dream come true i'm like oh i'm like okay i'm rooting and for you honestly <laughs> for as long as i've known him i did not know that he struggled so much as a kid which is like being sick all the time he like struggled with some asthma i know he talked about how wow, he couldn't even like run across the playground without like some kind of asthma attack and then here he is now getting to like run around the world it's not a playground anymore it's the world yeah. with his mom who he considers a hero like they're just going to be the heroes of the season they're going to be america's sweethearts yeah. i am hoping for the best for these two and you know i'm always a supporter of team cry counter and they were already crying so much this episode. And Angie had the episode quote of you can't drive while you're crying. So <laughs> I got to give it up for Team Cry Counter this season. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm excited to see more of them for sure. In eighth place are our twins, Anthony and Bailey. They mentioned from the starting line that they are all around beach bros. So starting at the beach was very fitting. They're very much in their element. But you know what? The race as a whole is not a beach. So <laughs> I think that goes to show how they performed on this first leg of the race. They seem like really fun guys. I'll give them that. But in terms of racers, I am kind of concerned. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a little like space case vibe. <laughs> but you know what? Like I could be totally wrong. Like sometimes like, I don't know, like I grew up on a beach and a lot of like the, oh, bro, dude, like they actually turn out to be like some of the smartest people I know. <laughs> One of them said that they failed Spanish twice in a row. And for a season that's based in South America, I don't know if that's going to serve them very well. I know, but hey, I'm, I basically flunked French too, but like I remember <laughs> the little things that I needed to in the heat of the moment. So hopefully they'll have some of that kind of, you know, come to the forefront of their brain, you know, like, oh, like I did do all the tests, but I remember how to say like left or right, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that was my experience with the French, at least. They've well, you know, out. to give them some credit, they did mention that I think growing up, they felt like a lot of people pitted them against each other. So they yeah. do, they're not strangers to competition. They are very competitive individually. It's just how are they going to perform competitively as a team together? So I will give them some credit because they did mention that they said, like, you know, going into this, they know how to step up and compete when they need to. So We'll see if that will hold true for the longevity of the the race. Yeah, because I wish I would have like wrote down exactly what he said, because I thought he said it like very beautifully, <laughs> you know, how they were like pit against them like their whole mm-hmm. lives. Like, you know, who had like the hotter girlfriend or who was smarter or who was like more competitive or who was more fit and stuff. And he was like, you know, it'll just be nice to see 
us not pitted against each other and for once like doing something together and just like almost proving everyone wrong. So, I mean, they're the perfect team that's kind of set up to be like, like shock everybody, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but you're right. The Amazing Race is not a beach. So (laughs) we'll see. In ninth place was Sunny and Busy. I know that they mentioned that they're obviously a strong team. They met in 2014 at the Fire Academy. Uh, 1,800 people applied for only 16 positions that were available and only three women total. So that in itself, I feel like they're just badass moms who are just very excited for their kids to just see how strong they are. But outside of that, I can't quite get a feel or a vibe for them yet. And I know that there's so much race left. Yeah. I mean, the only note I made was last to get to horses. (laughs) So they got the last horses, you know, but I want to say the other thing that I was trying to remember, I think they passed one of the teams and didn't tell them. I think it was the dad and daughter. I want to say they passed them and they could have said, Hey, we took the last one and they didn't. Yep. They're, you know, so I kind of, I was like, oh, like, okay, they, they got know. that race mentality. It's a race. Yeah. And so. if I'm wrong, I apologize. And Hey, I'm, I'm not knocking it. Like, I, you know, this is the first leg. I'm not helping anybody, you know, <laughs> unless asked, unless like, if I'm like, if it's put in my face, like, Hey, da, 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 like, I'm not gonna be like, sorry, I'm not helping you. You know, that's how like Raquel and I always like wondered, like, how would we navigate stuff like that? It's like, don't go out of your way to help someone. But like, if someone yeah. asked like human to human, unless it's like the end, <laughs> we're going to yeah. help, you know, yeah, but it yeah. was something that I noticed of them, which um, I was like, mm, noted, you know, like they could have <laughs> been like, Hey, we took the last one. You're wasting your, your steps, <laughs> but yeah, not too much about them, but I mean, definitely two badass women that could be another sneaky team, like a, a sneaky, Agreed. strong team. 10th place, another all female team, Kishori and Karishma, and they are already bringing the spot. Like they are funny as hell. They're so entertaining. I love these two. I think that they're going to be so fun to watch. Not to be underestimated. I mean, they started this leg off strong. Like they were at the top of the pack for majority of the episode. And this is where it got confusing to me. I know Karishma was having a lot of fun doing the roadblock. It seemed like she had a lot, like a smile on her face. She was laughing. She didn't read the clue because she was missing her handkerchief. So she had to go back and put that on. But I don't feel like that was much time lost there. But if I'm not mistaken, didn't they leave like fourth or fifth from the roadblock? And then yeah. all of a sudden they check in 10. They spend a lot of time at the rodeo because it took her a couple tries to get the seven hoops. And then yeah. when she finally did get it, then she realized she didn't have the scarf. And then she had to try again. I mean, I think she spent a lot more time at the rodeo than I think we realized. Yeah. Or than it showed. But the Um, editing was just kind of weird. It was weird. I was like almost like yelling, like because her, um, Kashori is the one that did not do that, right? Yes, yes. She literally, like, on her way out, she's like, read the clue. And, you know, she's just like, I'm good. Like, I'm going. You know, it's like, ooh, like that would have gotten under my skin with Raquel. Like, (laughs) I would have been like, I literally even told you before going in there, like, to read your clue, like the missing the scarf thing. Like, that's like something that would be really hard for me as a partner not to like want to like throw in Raquel's face. (laughs) But (laughs) I'm so competitive, guys. Like, I would have been so mad about that. Just I'm like, this is amazing race. Like, read your clue. Like, you should have had the scarf on. That's such a dumb mistake. I love to like kind of compare myself to like all the teams of the season and if I had to pick a team that I felt was most like Raquel and I it's definitely these girls they were giggly and funny and just their banter like the way that even though like yeah she like yelled at her like read your clue like that like that's just so something that I would have done to Raquel and Raquel 100% would have forgotten the scarf you know but like and they were fine and they, they didn't get last and it is what it is it's crazy that they're cousins because I really did think that they were sisters and then just to yeah. kind of hear the story that's a lot that she's been through just to see them like both of them you know just have such a fun spirit and I love that they constantly bring back like you know I know her parents are here I know they're watching and things like that like it just kind of gives that added like drive like I'm sure they're having a great time but I'm sure they really you know want to make her parents proud and this is like a favorite team for me so far like I get it's only like one leg in but I just 
I, I really like these girls a lot. Really fun banter between these two. I know Kishori mentioned she loves to be underestimated, which I think that she will be. And mm -hmm. then Karishma, she's like, I'm 4'11", so when people see me, they're like, that girl's weak, but have you jumped out of a plane 81 times? I'm like, girl, I've oh never God. jumped out of a plane once. So <laughs> yeah, like you're a badass. <laughs> and if I was paying attention, they got the memory, the wrestlers, very quickly. Yep. So again, like, like they're they're gonna be a fun team to watch and a strong one to look out for that again another kind of sneaky team that could be a lot stronger than people realize i love to be underestimated it could be it could be a superpower yeah um, but i really like those girls i really like them and 11th place was chris and mary our father daughter duo and we know that chris has been raising mary as a single dad ever since she was 10 years old and lost her mother to cancer He's been her teammate for life. They live in a one bedroom apartment together and they're just so happy to be able to see the world and have this experience together. He had to take on both roles, done what he could to make Mary thrive. I mean, Mary really is his best friend. I love their dynamic so much. I think I always just really root for the parent child teams just because I think I picture myself racing with either my mom or my dad and it just feels so much more relatable to me but the only thing and no shade to Mary but like Mary girl you have an alpha male team who is perceived to be very strong who are really behind you and you stop to say where are you guys going are you, go are you going to the detour and like yeah we're going to the rocking horses oh all the rocking horses were taken Mary why are you telling them that? Like, let them learn for themselves that there are no more rocking horses available. Get that time, get that extra lead over them. Because I wonder if it would have made a difference in how the placements of this leg would have gone. It's just like yeah. one of those decisions, just one tiny decision really can shake up how the rest of the leg goes for the other team. So Mary, I know you said it in the episode, you're too nice for your own good. And listen, I love you for that. You are such a sweetheart. But on the race there's a time <laughs> there's a time and a place to be a sweetheart <laughs> you, you tell her james i'll play devil's advocate for mary a little bit right because yes she told them that maybe she's looking at hey they're a strong team yeah, like we're in the back mm -hmm. and our whole strategy with you know doing some things with kim and pen or doing something with lulu and lala it's like if we have eyes on a team we at least know where we stand and if it becomes like we're neck and neck for last at least in Raquel and I's instance we felt confident beating anyone in a foot race unless it was Spencer or Anthony or Dusty and Ryan so it's like yeah it's like mm, if you guys were if you thought you were that far in the back of the pack like I guess maybe she felt confident that if we can just get to the detour together because she didn't want to get lost that they would beat the boys in whatever task it was to where it's like I can kind of see but I, yeah I don't think it was anything thought out I really think it was just her being so sweet and be like oh like that's that's it and it's like oh but I was like okay well you know what maybe this is how they don't get lost but then they ended up splitting up anyways that's the part what that happened? Got, that's the part that got me because it is yeah it's one thing to like tell a team or help a team and I'm a big believer and advocate for always have one team in sight at all times because yes. the moment there's no other teams in sight that's when that pressure and that anxiety starts to, to kick in because you're like oh, are we last unless so you're raquel and i we <laughs> thought we were in first we were in last like truthfully we we're pretty ditzy like we were literally like we don't see anyone we've like blown everyone out of the water lesson learned we don't see anyone that is a problem <laughs> that is a but problem. you still were a strong team and you made it to the finish line <laughs> so true. something worked but with with true, that but... moment i was like where was the follow through with that? Like I would have 100 percent made sure I latched onto Juan and Shane just to make sure. Yeah, that we was weird. going the wrong way because Juan and Shane ended up getting the the right direction, and they were they had the upper hand. They I was ended like, girls are going to help the them advantage. and ask to stick with them. Stick with them. <laughs> yes, yes, a hundred percent. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, I I love the nice. I loved. I really do. I mean, she's a sweetheart, and I love her and her dad. They are so cute together. But hopefully, this is a learning experience moving forward because I would love to see them do well. I do too. I think they have a lot of people rooting for them. But yeah, <laughs> I I agree with everything you're saying. <laughs> in 12th place, Amber and Vinny. I was shocked that they didn't do that well. Yes, 
same. To me at first, I was like, ooh, they're, they're, they're a stacked couple. I'm like, I guess it was just they got so lost right like that that seems I mean to be the main thing of where they went wrong I think they did pretty well in all of like the de- like the detours and things yeah but yeah it's the fact that he minored in Spanish so he speaks Spanish I'm like how did you get that lost like did they just choose not to stop and ask for directions like I was really confused on what happened like, and that very well could be the case because I feel like before you go on I mean you know we've experienced this like you're it's literally drilled into your head that if you stop to ask for directions you have to be on pause so that they can get releases so like yeah the race is a learning curve and I think for that first leg you're probably worried to stop thinking that it's going to cost a lot of time but in in reality it it's not a lot of time lost. It's almost kind of worth asking for those directions. So you're right. When they got to those tasks, when they got to the Detroit and Roblox, they did really well. Like they're, they, they got the tasks down. It's the, the navigation. I think maybe there's a little bit of a communication issues there that we've seen, but yeah. Like at one point she was like, I need you to go away from me. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I wonder if they're going to be that spicy couple this season, which I feel like we've been missing out. We love it. We love a spicy couple. <laughs> we love a spicy couple. I just, I would have not guessed that it would have been them. Um, no. Again, they work together. They met at work. Um, their line of work seems pretty stressful. And I love how the way that they kind of further describe themselves was she's the thinker, he's the doer. I'm like, okay, what a great combo. They would compliment yep. each other well. Yep. Um, I don't know that I saw that, like, you know, this leg. But again, this is the leg, if any, to get all your mishaps out. And how you'll tell if they're going to make it is if they can correct it. Because right. Just, yeah, with the directions, especially with someone, you have someone who speaks Spanish. You got to take some time to like, you know, get what you got to get, you know, when you stop and ask for directions. But one thing that we learned very quickly that helped us is you should be asking not only how do I get there and where do we have to turn, but how long should it take us to get there? So that way, if someone's like, okay, it's five minutes down the road and we've been driving for 10 minutes, I'm like, okay, Raquel, we have to stop again. Like we should have seen it by now. We either missed it. We need to turn around. I don't want to get too far. So maybe that's what happened. I would love to know because I, yeah, that was a huge shock to me. I'm like, what happened? I know that they prepared. It didn't come to fruition and now we're going to have to kind of relearn what we thought we knew yeah. and be a learning curve and bounce back from it. I, I have faith in these two, but I was just really surprised for the first leg how bumpy it was for the two of them. Yeah, because going into the next leg, they could kind of carry that anxiety and stress of like, oh my gosh, like we really messed up. We got ourselves so far, you know, but then there's another way of looking at it is like, okay, you guys already kind of made the mistakes. Now yeah. correct them because yeah. I guarantee you it, it just takes time, but all these flawless teams will eventually make a mistake. And because they've had smooth sailing, you know, that's your time to step in and, you know, kind of overtake that. But this was a really good episode because just a lot of people changed place and I love that like I I'm a huge fan obviously so it's like predictability is not what I want to see like I want to see like things and teams get tripped up and like the order shift so this was this was great and there was a moment where I was like there might be actual hope for Maya and Rohan which I'm so sad to see them go so early especially with just like (laughs) They're clearly super fans. They mentioned it at the starting line. You can just tell how excited that they are to be doing this race together. They talked about how they took different languages in school just to prepare for this moment of them being on the amazing race. Maya, though, mentioned just like how different, obviously, driving in another country is. And I think that was foreshadowing just for how the rest of the leg panned out for them. They just could not get the navigation down. When they came down that street, that was a dead end. I was like, oh no, this is game over for this sweet sibling duo. Like I just felt so bad. I'm also like, why didn't you just reverse the car? Why are you trying to turn around on this narrow road? Like what's happening? (laughs) Yeah, I can't really speak to that because Raquel and I did that. Uh, (laughs) like 
she's literally telling me to reverse and I'm not doing it. I'm like, just let me do it how I want. I'm the driver. Like I literally was like, oh my God, I literally know exactly like I've been there. I've it's like you lose all common sense in like a downward spiral. I knew that they were eliminated very early on because you can tell in like the interviews where oh, like yeah. they kind of talk, like I could just see it in her eyes. A there little was defeated. Like, yeah. And so I was like, I, I kind of knew going through the rest of the episode. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they they can't pull through, which, yeah, I was just devastated because, you know, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. It's like the people who are the most prepared are the ones that kind of I don't want to use the word flop. That sounds harsh, but it's almost like the super fan, the over preparedness, like is what makes you kind of make dumb mistakes just because you you have so we- much pressure as a super fan which I, I I would like to contribute to you know kind of what happened with them they wanted to be on this for forever so it's like I just especially hated to see that team go not saying that I wanted the nurse couple to go home I didn't want anyone to go home that's why when Phil was like oh you're going to continue racing I was so hopeful for Maya and Rohan for a minute because I was like oh my gosh like maybe this isn't it for them and they can like kind of correct themselves so I was like I was actually truly devastated for both of them I mean the fact that they took different languages is just for this I'm like come on give them another shot (laughs) I know I know but you're right it is I think going in as a super fan can either hurt or help you and I think going in terms of over preparedness I think Amber and Vinny were a prime example of that they're gonna bounce back from it I have no doubt about it but yeah Maya and Rohan unfortunately just couldn't correct those little minor mistakes quick enough to be able to give them a few extra placements ahead of other teams but it makes my heart hurt just because they are super fans but also like their team purple I know <laughs> I wasn't gonna bring that up <laughs> I'm bummed for them and I just hope that they had the best time and the best experience and like I hope so too they and were I mean, cute I have- I have to give it to them. I mean, they had a really tough and challenging leg. Like, I just felt like they kind of kept getting hit with, like, one thing after another. But they they kept such a great attitude. And, like, they said, like, you know, they they did not fight. It it didn't put them against each other. And they kept Mm -hmm. saying, you know, we're, we're not out of it until he tells us we're last. You know what I mean? And it's just... For them to keep their composure and like that positive attitude says a lot about who they are um, as like individuals. And I have like, you know, I'm sad we don't get to see more of them, but that's the amazing race. Yes, that's the amazing race. They won't race. keep racing. And I think it was a pretty close finish, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to get confirmation on that, but I do think it was like a matter of like five to 10 minutes. Oh, it's even worse. Yeah. I'll have to get confirmation on that, but I'm pretty sure it was pretty close. Which I need is, to know. Ugh. I'm yeah. sad for Rod and Letitia, though, that they didn't, like, get a prize. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer. I heard her be like, yeah, I'm, like, waiting to hear, like, what we won, and I just get, like, a keep racing, which is, like, not to, like, not be grateful. Like, obviously, there's still a grand prize out there, but I'd be like, mm. Who were your, I could say, like, top three standouts for this leg of the race? Top three for me, Ricky and Cesar. Am I saying that right? Cesar. I'm going to get it right, Cesar. I'm going to get it right. Okay, next episode. I'll get it right. (laughs) Personal favorite, and I'm hoping they prove to be a standout, is Kishori and Karishma. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love them. And my third one, if I have to pick, oh, is Angie and Danny. Those are my standouts. I would agree with two out of your three. Same with Kishori and Karishma. Same with Danny and Angie. I feel like those two teams are the stars of the premiere. But I think Rod and Letitia are also a standout from the premiere just because of how well they work together. And then they got first, of course. But I would say Ricky and Cesar are also very close behind that. So... Yeah. I guess the only reason why I didn't pick like Rod and Letitia is because like honestly like from the get go I just like kind of assumed that they would be strong like and I think they will go really far if not all the like all the way I don't know I I'm not a spoilers person like I don't know anything I don't like to know anything um, but there's just I don't know they just give me like really strong team vibes so I kind of like to go for like the teams that are a little more subtle with that but. I'm really excited about this season. Like I Me really too. liked the first episode. Like, More excited I really, than I really thought I would it. be. <laughs> same. same. Yeah, I just feel like there's great backstory. There's fun banter, fun drama. I do feel like they're bringing this competitive energy that I think 
personally, I've missed out on on 35 and 34. 35 and 34 were great seasons, but 36 already just feels like there's this intensity that as a fan, as a viewer, I've been missing out on. So I hope that that continues. Yes, I agree. And I just, I hope that the unpredictability continues too. Yes. Because like, I felt like this episode was a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And I loved the entire ride. <laughs> Maybe we're left with a cliffhanger because as we know, it's keep on racing through Puerto Vallarta. It's good. It looks like people are going to have some like heat exhaustion. It looks like yeah. Angie passes out at one point. Yeah. So I can't wait to see how this leg continues. I do know that Phil said in an interview that they didn't realize how hard this leg was until teams like checked in at the end of this second half. So I cannot wait for next week's episode. The season overall, it's already off to a great start. And I look forward to talking about it with you, Kayla. I so look <laughs> forward to it. And all Yay. the many other things we chat about. <laughs> I know. And on that note, I need to go watch the Love is Blind reunion. <laughs> Literally, I'm doing that right after this. <laughs> Same. So we'll be texting. Um, thank okay. you, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the premiere as well. We'll be back next week. And until then, as Phil says, I guess the world is waiting. The world is waiting. <laughs> See you guys Bye. next time. <laughs>